Welcome, I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today's technique allows you to take an inky background, any kind of inky background, and create offset strips. This is, looks a lot more complicated than it is, and I'll share a few ways to do this. I have two card examples for you. A great thing about this technique is you can use products you have, but I'm using the new Hero Arts October 2022 My Monthly Hero Kit. I really like the Hero Arts kits because the value is like twice what the cost is, so you get a lot of bang for your buck. This kit includes a six by eight stamp set and the coordinating dies, a large cling stamp, background stamp, two ink cubes, and some specialty paper. I will be using the background and the stamp set and coordinating dies today. I really like that this set can be used to create different winter scenes and that there's a die for all of the images, including the sentiments. I'll be creating very basic scenes today, but you could go over the top with this if you wanted to. I like silhouette images like this also because all you need to do is stamp it with black ink or white heat emboss on a colored background. Here is the cling stamp that is included in this kit. It's a great snowfall or rain background stamp, or you can use it just to add the look of texture on any themed card. And in addition to the kit, I'll also be using this Hero Arts Sentiment Strip die. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch background die that creates a bunch of strips. This is great for creating strips for sentiments. It's great for using with scraps to create colorful stripes on your card. I will be demonstrating a technique with it today, but you do not need this die to do the technique, and I'll talk about that throughout the video. I just find it really handy and great to use. This die also lines up with the Hero Arts Sentiment Strips stamp set, which is this tree filled with sentiments. You can stamp the tree and then use the die to cut all of those sentiments out at once, which I'll demonstrate later. Now that's how I'll be using this stamp set today, but keep in mind you could also maybe gold heat emboss this tree on a green background and add little ornaments or gems here and there. So you could use it without that background die too. I just won't be doing that in today's video. Now we can get started by stamping our silhouette images for both of our cards. I have my Misty stamping tool and a few of the images. By the way, the Misty is now available in black in their newer model that came out a few years ago. Really excited about the black model. I'll link to it below if you're interested. I just have white cardstock in my stamping tool and I'm inking up my stamp with Altenew Obsidian Black Ink, which is a pigment ink because I plan to heat emboss this. So after I've stamped it a couple times, I will sprinkle on some Hero Arts clear embossing powder and heat set it. If you do not have a black pigment ink, another thing you could do is stamp the image with a regular black dye ink, then stamp right on top of it with Versamark ink, which is a little sticky, and then add the clear embossing powder. But if you have a black pigment ink like this one, you can just stamp that and then add the powder itself. Now I'm stamping a few others here. Notice I have a little pressure tool that I press over my stamping tool. You don't need to have a tool like that, but a pressure tool is helpful with solid images like these. This is a new one from Pink Fresh Studio, but anything heavy and smooth would work. Now I'm doing these silhouette images in black, but another fun thing you could do is white heat embossed directly on a colorful background. I wanted to be able to die cut mine today and have these bold, high contrast backgrounds, so I decided to do the black on white and cut them all out. By the way, if you see bruises on my arms, I had more blood taken, and every time I do, I get big bruises. All right, so now we have all of our images cut out and ready to go for our cards. I think it's best to start with this. It helps with planning as we pull our cards together. We can now do the fun part, which is the inky background. For this example, I'm using Hero Arts Core Ink. You could use any inks that you want here. I chose Hero Arts Core Inks because I love the color selection. I have a piece of white cardstock here and a blending tool, and I'm blending the ink onto the paper. The best part about this technique is you do not need to have a good blend by any means. So if you struggle with blending, you might wanna try this out. So what I do for blending is I kind of start in the corner and start with a light hand, and then I keep building up the ink. By starting with a light hand, you get less of the splotches, but you'll notice I'm not real careful here. 
I've put uh, Orchid and Ultra Pink down on the bottom half, doing kind of the half purple, half pink. And then above that, I'm doing two colors of blue, Summer Sky and Stonewash, kind of doing half one color, half the other. This technique works best if you have kind of different areas of color. It makes it more dramatic. So I have these four areas of color here, and it'll really make the technique stand out. Notice I'm not doing a lot of blending here. I'm just putting down as much color as I want. You could go heavy or light, it doesn't matter at all. Now here I actually took my blue blending brush to my pink ink pad and it left a mark on the ink pad. Don't worry if that happens, your pink ink will work just fine. Now, if you struggle with blending inks and you want an ink very easy to blend with, I do recommend Hero Arts Oxide inks. Those are great, but you, again, can do this technique with any dye ink as I did. Next, I want to create those strips or those stripes in the background. You can do this with a trimmer. I'll talk about that later, but I'm going to use that background dye that I showed you earlier to make it so much faster. So I have my background dye and I'm taping it onto my inked background, which by the way, I didn't completely cover because I'm not using the whole piece. I'm just using a little tape to tape it on there and then I'll run it through my die cut machine. I do recommend running any dies offset on your plates. Notice how I've put it offset. I'm not running it through straight, especially when your die is large and has straight lines. It's best to go at an angle instead of straight on. It'll prevent warping of your plates and that loud cracking noise. Now I'm taking those plates off and I'm keeping everything together and I'm sliding the top plate off. So you can see all of those pieces, all of those strips are still in my die. I'm putting some temporary tape over that and pressing down so the tape comes in contact with the cardstock behind it. That'll keep them all in that background die. I will then flip it over and put tape on this other side. This connects all of those strips, which makes this techni technique much faster to do. There are a few ways you could keep all these pieces together, but I found this to be the most effective. I'm using Spellbinder's Best Tape Ever, which now comes in three thicknesses. I'm using the two bigger ones here, and it is great for temporary techniques like this. Now I can remove the tape from the front and pull all my strips out, all connected. Such a big time saver. At this point, I thought it'd be fun to add that background stamp. I could have done it before I die cut, but I didn't think of it at the time. Now I have in my Misty stamping tool, the Brutus Monroe Pink Stick and Stamp Mat. He's come out with a pink version to help raise money for women who have breast cancer so that they can get new wigs. So I will put a link to that below, great cause. And it holds my paper, my background here in place as we stamp on it. I'm stamping with that background stamp with white pigment ink. This will be very faint on here. If you want bold white, you could do white heat embossing. But white pigment ink gives a beautiful, soft kind of, um, highlighted look, or in this case, kind of a snowfall look. Now, again, I could have done this before I did the die cutting. I just didn't think about it at the time. Later, I'll show you, you can do it after we do the technique. So stay tuned for that. All right, so now I can take this background off and it's ready for the fun technique. Now, this is super easy. Remember, I have the tape on the background holding the pieces together. I am just taking every other strip off and rotating it. Now at this point, I realize the white pigment ink is still wet, so I'm gonna heat set it and give it a little bit of time to dry. Didn't want to uh, kind of smear that as I do this. But all I'm doing is taking every other strip off and rotating it. And look at the cool pattern that you get. So that tape on the back is just holding all the strips together, making this technique much faster. However, if you don't have a die like this, you could take an inky background, cut it into strips, just like quarter inch strips using a trimmer, and lay them down onto tape up, net, up against each other, very close to each other in order. And then you can do this technique where you flip every other one. So you can do this with your trimmer too. It just will take a few more minutes. And look at that cool background. I have a piece of white cardstock here, just something thin and lightweight. 
putting glue on it, and then I'll just lay my whole background onto it, including the tape. No sense taking the tape out. No one will ever see it. Then I can use my trimmer to trim off the edges just to give it a nice clean look. I end up trimming mine to be about three and three quarter inches wide, which is a little narrow for a typical A2 card, but that's the look I'm going for, which you'll see in a moment. The last piece we need to create before putting our card together is a sentiment. So I'm using the tree sentiment stamp that I showed you earlier, and I'm stamping it with black pigment ink on white cardstock and adding clear embossing powder. You do not need to heat emboss these images. You could just stamp in black, but I really like the shine on black when we have these bold style cards. Now for the fun part, we can use that same background die to quickly cut out all of these sentiments. Isn't that cool how it lines up? Lots of different uses for these two products. So now I have a lot of sentiments ready to use. I'm hoping they come out with more sentiment stamp sets that line up with that die. Now we can put our card together. As I mentioned, I did trim my inked piece to be about three and three quarter inches wide so that I could create a narrow note card. I'm gluing it onto a four and a quarter inch wide note card here, but I will trim off the excess. I thought it'd be fun if my card was a little narrow so that one of our scene silhouette images hangs off the edge. So in the end, this is about three and three quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So I have my silhouette image here and I use the same coordinating die to cut from two scraps of white cardstock. I'll glue these scrap die cuts behind our stamped one to give it some strength. I want this die cut to be glued right against the edge of that inked piece so it'll have some raised area behind it and some not raised area. If I just put a single die cut over that, it would get squished in the mail. So by putting those additional die cuts behind it, it gets dimension and strength. Here I have my sentiment strip. Behind it, I'm putting two thin strips of scrap cardstock, and this is simply to give it a little dimension against the background. Let's glue these pieces onto our card. That silhouette image will be half on the raised pink area and half on the white note card. So on the white note card, I'm putting some thin, thin foam tape so it is about even with the pink background and I'll lay the silhouette image on top. And I love how that really just pops against that bold background. And right below that, we will add our sentiment strip. I will trim the excess off the sentiment strip, but not off of the silhouette image because I want that to hang off the edge of the card. That's why I made my card a little narrow and it'll still fit into an envelope. Now I have my little Santa image added and the moon. I wish I had made the Santa image kind of go off the right edge of the card too, but I'll do that next time. Now we can trim off the excess of the sentiment strip and we have our card set except for a little bit of sparkle. I'm using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive to add a few little stars on the background. These are itty bitty kind of silvery iridescent stars. They are very tiny, so it really doesn't cover up our fun background, but instead creates a little bit of sparkle. So when you tilt it in the light, this really looks like it glows. It's really cool how these iridescent sequins shine. All right, here's our completed card. The edges hang off, but that's okay. It'll still fit into our A2 envelope. You can see how those stars really catch the light and add a lot to the card. But the star of the show is definitely that striped background. By simply offsetting or turning some of the strips, we get a really cool background. Now you could have done this with just a plain inked background, but it really steps it up to do that stripe technique. Let's do another example of the same technique. This time I'm creating a little ornament scene at the center of my card. Keep in mind, you could do this card as a shaker card. I decided not to, but it definitely would work. All right, I'm starting with the same process where I'm doing kind of four different areas of color on our background. You could do more if you want to, but there's something really cool about having four, like the four different colors in the four corners because when you rotate the strips, it just creates a cool pattern. So I did four different blues and teals here. 
Now we'll take that same background die and line it up on the front of our inked piece and run it through our die cut machine. Again, if you don't have a die like this, you could instead use a trimmer to cut like quarter inch strips and just try to keep them in order. I ran this through my die cut machine and this time I flipped my plates over so that the cardstock was facing up and carefully slid it out and all the cardstock pieces stayed in place. So I didn't need to put tape on the other side. This time I'm just putting tape directly onto the back of the strips just so they can all be connected, which is really helpful for this technique. But again, if all of your pieces fall out or if you cut your own strips, just keep them in order off to the side and then put them onto tape like this right up against each other. All right, so now I have tape on the back. Let's go ahead and do the technique where we rotate every other strip. Last time I stamped first and then did this. I think you get better results if you rotate first and then stamp. So here you can see I am just flipping every other one. You could change up the pattern, but I feel like doing every other one really gives the best results. Another way to do this technique would be to take a piece of colored cardstock and ink up half of it with a darker shade. Then do the strip cutting and alternate every other and you'll get a similar effect, but with just the two colors. All right, so now I'm picking this up and laying it onto my sticky mat, placing that same background stamp on top and stamping with white pigment ink. So this time I will have more of a continual pattern of this stamp on it because we've already flipped the strips that we want to flip. You could do stenciling over this. You could do any background stamp that you want. Again, it's best to do the stamping after doing that flip technique. I didn't think about it earlier. So now we have our background done. For this card, I'm also using the Hero Arts Infinity Bulb Ornament Die Set, which I've used a lot off screen this year. I like that I can cut anything into an ornament. I'm using the largest ornament for this card. I thought it'd be fun to make the stripes kind of go at a diagonal on this instead of horizontal. You could make it vertical if you wanted to. Here I'm trimming off some of the excess because I thought I was gonna make a shaker card, but I changed my mind. So you definitely don't need to trim this. Just make sure your background fits in the ornament. All right, next I have a piece of white cardstock that is four by five and a quarter inches, a little bit smaller than the card I plan to create. I'm taping that ornament towards the top center of that background, as centered as I can get, and running it through my die cut machine. For a sentiment, I'm using the Hero Arts North Pole Express stamp set. I wanted a long sentiment that I could curve along the bottom of the ornament. So I have wishing you all the magic of Christmas and I'm centering it right underneath the bulb. I will then close the door on my stamping tool and then start to arch the stamp to meet the curve of that bulb. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but here's a trick. I keep the centers of the stamp stuck to the stamping tool. Then I put the die next to it and I just curve the sentiment to meet the curve of the ornament. Then I remove that ornament die and I'll check it against my cardstock piece. If you see that it's too close in an area, you can kind of um, adjust it a little bit, but it's really not that hard to do and a great way to get more from your long sentiments. I had stamped that with a black pigment ink, so I'll add some clear embossing powder and heat set it. Next, let's create the pieces to fill the ornament. I have a piece of scrap silver cardstock and I'm cutting the top of our ornament. We only need the top area. And then I will cut right along the topper, creating a little silver topper that I can add to our ornament. I also cut off the top of a white die cut so that I could glue that behind the silver so it would have a bit of dimension. But you definitely don't have to do that. You may notice on my card that the blue striped ornament is kind of set back from the white frame around it. I did that by creating two additional die cut pieces. These pieces are a bit smaller than our background. So I'm cut these to be about five by three and three quarter inches. From the center of these two pieces, I'm cutting that same ornament. These two white pieces will get glued behind our main ornament piece over on the left. This is simply for dimension. It serves no other purpose but to look nice. You could use foam tape here if you wanted to but I find that this is um, better results in the end. I don't have to worry about my card getting squished in the mail and I didn't waste the foam. I instead used some scrap white cardstock. 
I could have just glued the blue striped inked piece behind this opening, but instead I used the same ornament die to cut and I cut it at an angle. Now I can glue my layered frame piece onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And inside of the opening, I can glue our striped piece. I just like to take a paper piercer and really push it down into the crevices so that it really is set back inside of that white frame. Now we can glue our little ornament topper up there on the top area, just using strong liquid adhesive so nothing comes apart. I chose two of my silhouette images to tuck into that ornament opening, cutting off where I need to and gluing in place. I thought it'd be fun to have a bow on top of the ornament, so I used the bow that comes with the Hero Arts Holly Berries stamp and die set. This is sold as a combo, lots of great sentiments. There are two great leaf images there, and that bow is fantastic. I cut it from Hero Arts white glitter cardstock, and I glued it right at the top of our ornament. So I did also add a few of those itty bitty stars, the same ones I used earlier, and I put those in that little sky background with that stripe technique. Here's a closer look at that cool offset stripe. I think that really adds a lot to this card. You could have just done a solid inked background, but this really adds a lot of interest. And you don't have to start with inking. You could do sprays on your cardstock and then do the stripe offset technique. You could do any kind of inking technique you like. By the way, this last card would really work great as a snow globe scene too. This is the new Hero Arts snow globe window die, but you definitely could use just a circle die and kind of create your own snow globe or ornament. But this snow globe would be great with this particular stamp set and technique. All right, there you have it, a fun way to step up your inked backgrounds. If you're interested in what I used today, it's linked below in my YouTube description. And if you're interested in more ways to use strips of cardstock or inked backgrounds, I'll link to a couple other videos here at the end for you to check out. Thanks for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you again soon with another video.